Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas, joined today by Tokyo Brandon at JP Baseball TV on all your social channels. Brandon, we've already asked him on several times how he got his nickname, and he'll probably get into that here in a minute. But today, I need to know his top three things before you bet Japanese baseball. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, well, I do live in in Tokyo, so that might be where my nickname comes from. Uh, regarding Japanese baseball, uh, I've been betting this for a long time. I've been scouting it for a long time with uh, MLB in my past. Uh, a couple things you need to know about Japanese baseball before you bet it uh, is, number one, the rules are a little bit different in Japanese baseball compared to MLB, where Japanese games can end in a tie. So with a game that ends in a tie after 12 innings, you want to be very careful careful uh, giving minus ones or minus one and a half. It's very dangerous to do in a game that can end in a tie. It's kind of like soccer uh, in that respect. Um, so style-wise, though, it's a lot different than MLB because style-wise, uh, managers tend to leave their starting pitchers in very, very late. Uh, I think seven to eight innings is the norm for a starting pitcher, whereas in MLB, if a pitcher goes five innings, you're kind of lucky. Uh, they'll let them go 100 pitches, 110 pitches. I've seen even just last year uh, where a starting pitcher goes 110 pitches and they put them back in in the eighth inning to go 125. So it, in Japanese baseball, you have to focus on starting pitchers and you have to know the starting pitchers really well. And the bullpen only counts for about 20% of your cap. That's very interesting because you're right. I think that's what my disdain for American baseball comes from because those bullpens can <laughs> and will get you. Let's talk a little bit more in-depth betting in terms of betting Japanese baseball. Where where can we find this to bet? So Japanese baseball is available up to about two years ago. It wasn't quite readily available, but now I get all my numbers from DraftKings, FanDuel, uh, the, the the larger American sports books is what I use to get my numbers. And when I put my numbers out, it's, it's mainly from DraftKings because I prefer them because they give a lot more options uh, and they give a lot more uh, alt lines and things like that. Japanese baseball, the average score is about 6.8 per game as opposed to MLB where it's about 8.8 .8 per game. Uh, so you wanna use a lot of alt lines when you can, because the juice really isn't that bad. One run is a lot more valuable when you're talking about six run games uh, than when you're talking about nine run games. So uh, the books do have a few limits uh, on Japanese baseball. Uh, I can put about 1,200 on a game. Uh, and when I saw you at the Westgate last year, uh, I bet it in person. Uh, they let me bet uh, 2000 uh, per game then. So there are a few limits, but they're generally available at every casino in person and every online casino that I've ever seen. That's awesome because you're absolutely right. I did not know so many American books offered it. I remember you walked up to me with your ticket and you're like, hey, they took two dimes at the Westgate. Love this place. They did. So you always love that kind of stuff. Uh, any other final notes on what people need to know when betting Japanese baseball? Last note is it's very low scoring. As I said, a six run game, you never want to lay one and a half in a Japanese baseball game. I don't care if uh, Sasaki's pitching. I don't care if Yamamoto's pitching. You never lay a run and a half in Japanese baseball. That's my final note. All right. Brandon's top three tips before you bet Japanese baseball. Right now you can get 25% off one of his daily packages or even an all access pass up to one full year using coupon code TIPS25. T-I-P-S 25. You only get one per user, so make sure you guys use it wisely. Brandon, let's get into something a little bit more familiar with me. Uh, MLB prop betting. We have two things yes. that we need to focus on here. And uh, help me out because Usually I just send a text or two and I, and I get some uh, assistance with these props. Okay. Um, as you know, my background is scouting. I scouted for an MLB team. So I like to focus on one-on-one -on -one matchups. And baseball is really a one-on-one -on -one matchup if you think about it. At any point in the game, uh, it's a pitcher versus a batter. So I like to focus on those one-on-one -on -one matchups because when I'm predicting the future, I like to use factors that I can predict. Uh, makes sense. So uh, regarding pitchers, uh, I have a, a method for pitchers and I have a method for hitters when I do props in MLB. All right, let's hear what your specific methods are um, in regards to pitching props. Okay, pitching props. Uh, I always like to bet pitcher innings pitched 
uh, rather than strikeouts. And I have a reason for that. Um, a, a generally, a pitcher will throw five to eight strikeouts in a game. Uh, it's a very low number. So it's very hard to middle or top or go under a low number. So, you know, try to go over or under two, it's very difficult to do. But uh, innings pitched is generally between 15 and 20. So it's much easier to hit a high or a low on a higher range like that. So I always like to bet pitcher innings, uh, innings pitched. Uh, if you follow pitchers, and it's really nice the stats you can get with Major League Baseball because you can see how a pitcher historically does against a certain team. Uh, and it, I find it quite easy to, to predict the uh, innings pitched, how, how many innings they're going to go. I wait for about three starts into the season. Uh, but after that, it becomes fairly predictable. That's interesting. That's something that, you know, you always hear about strikeout props, but I never hear about innings pitched. I'll have to check that one out for this upcoming baseball season. Now, another one that we talk about a lot in uh, the prop market is hitter props, but yes. more on the home run side. You're looking at this from yes. a different angle, though. Well, home runs are a lot sexier than anything else because everyone likes the long ball. But uh, if you look at the stats for hitters, generally they'll the, the good hitter on Otani, it's on wagertalk.com's YouTube page. But uh, Otani, in his career, hits a home run every about 15 at-bats. Uh, and he hits an RBI about one in every six at-bats. Um, those are really hard because a hitter generally will have three to four at bats in a game uh, and he could go zero home runs. He could go zero RBIs. Uh, so the prop that I like to look at when I'm doing hitters is the runs RBI uh, runs RBI hits prop. So generally books will offer runs RBI hits. Uh, I know DraftKings does because DraftKings is pretty much what I use to get my numbers uh, and they they offer runs RBIs run. Uh, RBI runs hits props for hitters over under one and a half, generally speaking. Uh, so I find those to be quite uh, profitable. Uh, you can look up a hitter's history against a certain pitcher. Uh, you can look at where that hitter is hitting in the lineup, uh, if he has a good hitter behind him or after him. Uh, and the thing that I really like about uh, RBI runs hits props is when the, bat when the batter gets walked, he can still score for your prop where if you do hits over under, uh, walks don't count. So I really like the the RBI runs hits prop. Ooh, that's very interesting. Remember, always read your house rules. I would have not thought that. He is Tokyo Brandon. You guys can follow him at JP Baseball TV. And, of course, you can get all of his stuff over at wagertalk.com. Right now, you can get 25% off an all-access pass. That's a one day, one week, one month, 90 days, or an entire season using coupon code TIPS25, T-I-P-S 25. Thank you to Tokyo Brandon.